Psalm number 46. I'm going to read the whole psalm for you. And then we'll pray. Psalm 46. To the chief musician for the sons of Korah. A song upon Alamo. Alamo is a musical term. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, see life. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the work of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you spoke to my heart, Lord, as I was doing my own reading the other day. And, um, this really impressed upon me, Lord, uh, what is said here in this song. And so I pray, Father, that you will bless my sharing of it this evening with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray and ask it in Christ's name. Amen. And as I was saying, as I was praying, I, I part of my own reading that I do every day. Uh, you know, uh, my, my schedule is the same I've had for, for decades. Uh, the morning, I read Old Testament, New I read from the wisdom books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, evening I read New Testament. Uh, and that, that's my own reading, that's not my studying or, or you know, our family devotions or anything like that. And as I was reading through the Psalms, that's where I was at, was at Psalm 46, was one of the Psalms I was reading. Uh, and it just, something about it just really hung with me, stuck with me on that. And, uh, I just felt uh, uh, moved to simply go verse by verse through this psalm and expound upon these verses. So verse number one, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and our strength. Well, a refuge is a place of safety. It is a place of protection and of defense and God is that refuge for us he is our strength now strength gives confidence strength allows you to confront to contend and to overcome things the Lord is our defense and he is our offense uh, we have to remember, we are warriors in a spiritual warfare. And defense and offense are both tactical parts of any warfare. And you're going to need both if you are engaged in that warfare. And we should all be engaged in that warfare uh, in order for us to be successful and to be victorious. I mean, when you're overwhelmed, uh, you know, uh, when you are wounded, you need refuge. Yeah. Well, I remember 
a number of people was made a comment when oh, we are retreating this is, this is a, 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 we're advancing to the rear <laughs> No, but I mean, there's times where you're you're going to need that refuge. You're going to need uh, that place of, of safety and protection and defense. Likewise, uh, if you're out there on the offensive, you know, the church militant, you know, like we will be on the Fourth of July, uh, resisting the devil, tearing down strongholds. Uh, we need his strength. You don't want to do this in your own strength. <clears throat> Believe me. Okay? Uh, you don't want to try and do this in your power, in your strength, and in your wisdom. Uh, you know, I always liked it in 2 Corinthians 12.10 where Paul says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. When I'm not relying on my own power. Remember, God told Saul, when you were little in your own eyes, you know, then you know, you were you looked to me. But you know, when you started thinking that you were the strength, that you were the power, that you that's when you fell. He is a very present help in trouble. And that is quite literal. He is a very present help. You know, I think of my, my friend John Nordman, you know, and what he must go through daily uh, with his pancreatic cancer. Okay. He doesn't need a help that may come along if it's his will. So, you know, no, he needs a very present help. You know, uh, little baby August soul needs a very present help. Brother Dan needs a very present help uh, in trouble. And I mean, trouble comes to everybody. I don't care who you are. Doesn't make a difference. Lost and saved alike. You know, for the redeemed, though, the incredibly huge difference is the fact that we have the Lord. I've said this so many times, and I said because it's so incredibly true. I can't understand. I can't imagine trying to go through life without Christ to lean on. To have the hopelessness. You know, I mean, they lie to themselves. The world will lie to themselves with all kinds of lies. They will try to bury and cover their sorrows and their troubles uh, with things with money, with drugs, with alcohol, with all you know, but it can't do anything. It can't do a thing for him. He is always present to give just the help we need, both when and how we need it. The help he provides will always be exactly what we need. You know, we need to remember the Lord will always provide our needs, not necessarily our wants. Now, if your heart is right with the Lord and the motives of your heart are right, needs and wants might very well coincide. Because, as God spoke of King David, he was a man after God's own heart. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. All things. Sometimes we look at what's going on in our lives. Sometimes we look at things that are going on in other lives. And we're going to say, what good can possibly come of that? But in the Lord, all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. The Lord always answers prayer. Exactly when it's needed, and exactly with what is needed. Learn to trust him. Learn to trust him. Just because the Lord doesn't answer when you think he should answer, 
and he doesn't answer you how you think he should answer you doesn't mean that he's been unfaithful or that he does not care. He'll answer, and he'll answer as he knows is appropriate and necessary for your good and for his glory. Learn to try, try him. And he'll be able to try him. Like the scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. I'm telling you. Trust him. Trust him. Verses 2 and 3. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. Now these two verses immediately take us to the end times. You know, the very end of things, the final rebellion uh, of Satan and unregenerate mankind against the Lord. Go over to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation 20, verses 7 through 11. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, in this case is earthly Jerusalem, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Also 2 Peter 3.10. Next, a little bit, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements, shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And this is where we're going to stay throughout the remainder of this psalm, is these end time here. That's why it talks about the, you know, the things that it does there in the Psalms about the, the earth, you know, being burned and destroyed and the floods and the waters and everything on it. This is going to be the end of all things as we know it. And I, it, 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 sometimes I have to laugh about humanity when they talk about, you know, uh, you know saving the environment and, you know, and global warming and all these other things and it's like day's gonna come where God's just gonna go <laughs> and it's just gonna burn like that. And be, and God's gonna start all over with it. Yeah. You know, we're gonna save the planet. No you're not. <laughs> you ain't gonna save nothing. Not one bit. So the, this whole psalm from this point out Okay, context. We're in the end times. It amazes me when you read the Psalms, you read the prophets, the things that they talk about, and they have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> David didn't know anything about what he was what he was talking about here. What the fulfillment of the I mean, none of that stuff happened there with David. None of it happened back under Moses. None of that. This is all part it's all future. And I mean, he's writing this down, these, these things, and it's like, you know, uh, but it's, it's literally going to happen. Verse 4, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles, plural, of the Most High. Now, this would be the river of life, in the New Jerusalem. That's Revelation 22, verses 1 and 2. Uh, turn 
and over there, and we'll read it. Now he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, on the either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded their fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Okay, so we went from earthly New Jerusalem. Now we're at, you know, our earthly Jerusalem to New Jerusalem. And that jump in that verse it says, The tabernacles of the Most High. Know you not that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? Uh, I mean, that's that, number one, right there. Uh, the Most High, okay, that's the Gentile title for God Almighty. Okay, it's also referring, though, to our mansions in the New Jerusalem. Okay, remember John 14, 2, in my father's house are many, his house, singular, are many mansions, plural. Uh, again, back in Revelation uh, 20, verse 3, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, singular, is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Amen, amen. That's verse 4, also verse 5. God is in the midst of her. He shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Verse 6. The heathen raged. The kingdoms, the kingdoms were moved. God's not moved. He shall not be moved. Okay, the new Jerusalem shall not be moved. Okay, but the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. And the earth melted. Some people think it's melting today. <laughs> Go back a few here to Psalm 2, 1 through 5. Psalm number 2, verses 1 through 5. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing, anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. This is the last war. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Verse 7. And when we get to verse 7, we have another change. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Here, we're going right to Israel and speaking of Israel here. I mean, for them, he is the Lord of hosts. Uh, Joshua chapter 5. Joshua 5, verse 13, 14, and 15. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. Joshua knew who that was right away. Then Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's, Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place wherein thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. He is the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, whom the Lord renamed Israel. And Israel, the nation of Israel, are God's chosen people. They are God the Father's bride, the same as the church is the bride of the only begotten Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord has always, you know, as stiff-necked and rebellious as they've been, the Lord has always been the refuge for the Jews. 
He's been so in the past. And he will be again through the great tribulation period that is to come. Zechariah 13 6. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hand? Then shall he answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. I mean, what a shock it is going to be for the Jews that have survived when they find out that the person whom they had been taught and led to believe was a blasphemous bastard child is indeed the only begotten son of the father and is their Messiah. It's going to be mind-blowing for them to find this out. I mean, look how he addresses them. You know, and he shall answer, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. And then, of course, here it again. We are followed by Selah. Uh, the, the Selah is, is a musical term. It means a pause. It is a pause to contemplate on what has been said. And doctrinally, uh, it has always connected with end time prophecy. Verse 8. Verse 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolation he has made in the earth. So we're dealing with Christ revealing himself to the nation of Israel. So we are at the second advent in the end time. And from Mount Sinai all the way up the King's Highway, so just before Mount Pisgah, okay, there was going to be nothing but death, destruction, and the lake of fire on earth as we follow the Lord Jesus Christ from there as we march towards Jerusalem to make it the a holy city. And then from there we go to the Valley of Megiddo. The Valley of Megiddo, the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, the reference I want to use is in Revelation 14 and verse 20 for you. And the winepress was trodden without the city. And blood came out of the winepress even under the horse's bridles by the space of a thousand six hundred furlongs. Tread the wine press of the wrath of Almighty God alone. And we don't get to fight with him that time. The battle of Armageddon, he's going to take them himself. These are the forces of the Antichrist. That valley, 75 miles long, 30 miles wide, and his blood's going to run that area four feet deep. That is a lot of blood. In fact, the Bible says that they're going to be gathering up and burying the remains for years. Uh, and eventually they'll get to a point where most of it's taken care of and then they're going to appoint people. Uh, you go, you're traveling, you're going somewhere, you find a human bone, you're supposed to mark it, and there are going to be people traveling the countryside in that part of the world. They find those bones and take them to where they're going to be buried in the Valley of Hinnom. Back, you know, we go on and we read uh, here in verse 9, He maketh wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot with fire. They're going to be burning the weapons of warfare for years as fuel. <laughs> when we're dealing with that. Now also there with verse 9, all wars will cease. I mean, at any given time in the world right now, there's probably at least a half dozen wars going on. Some you're not tremendously aware of. Uh, which is one I'm trying to think of that's going on in the uh, Pacific Rim. In 
Indonesia, I think. Uh, there's been a, a military coup. I mean, a lot of this stuff you don't hear much about. They don't report on it, on some of these things. I mean, what's going on in the Ukraine isn't the only fight and war that's going on. But it says he'll make all wars to cease. For a thousand years, there's only going to be one last war. I mean, we've got three world wars coming up yet, folks. <laughs> there's a lot to look forward to. There's that the one-day war that's going to bring the Antichrist into power, there's the Battle of the Armageddon, and then there's the final war where unrepentant men and Satan go to dethrone Christ. And God's not even going to waste a second at that point in time, at that last war. In one instant, one instant, that's it. Now, 2 Peter 3.10, where well, we just read a moment ago, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Nothing. It's gone. God just wipes the whole thing out. And all the humanity finds themselves just standing out in nothing before God as he sits on his great white throne. Then verses 10 and 11. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Be still and know that I am God. That's one of the best pieces of advice you, anybody could ever get. Be still and know that I am God. Everybody needs to do this, especially the redeemed. Be still. Quit trying to do it yourself. Quit trying to do it in your wisdom. Quit trying to do it in your strength. Quit trying to do it your way. Be still and know that I am. That's what he said his name is. I am. I am God. Not you. Not any man or any other sentient being. Men's solutions, men's answers. What a failure they are. Okay? I am am God. Be still and know that I am God. And the Gentiles will worship and will exalt the Lord, whether they want to or not. Uh, the Lord will be exalted in the earth. He will be exalted in heaven. He will be exalted in hell. Go over to Micah chapter 4. Micah, Jonah, then Micah, followed by Nahum. Micah 4, verse 4 verses. But in the last days, which is the context of what we've been reading, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountain. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And again, this is earthly Jerusalem here. Verse 3, and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. But they shall sit, every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make him afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. That's the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. All nations are going to go up to Jerusalem 
to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that refuse, elsewhere in the scriptures it says that they're going to suffer droughts. They will suffer infestations and they will suffer other plagues that God will send upon them in their rebellion. I mean, you remember how you know, Pharaoh back in uh, Exodus, Exodus 5, 2, Who is the Lord? That I should obey the voice, his voice to let Israel go. I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. Boy, did he rue that. <laughs> As he was drowning there in the Red Sea. You know, I, I mean, it just amazes me uh, every time I read through Exodus and all that God did, and, and they just, no, no. You know, I'm going to resist. I'm going to rebel. I'm going to, you know, until you know the the plague of the Passover. You know, you know, and every firstborn, men and beast, dies in Egypt. And then Pharaoh says, "Look, get out. <laughs> Take whatever you want and just get out." <clears throat> but then, even then, after that, they're gone. And then Pharaoh's like, "What do we do? Letting them?" What do you mean, what did we do letting them go? Your nation's been destroyed. You know, and they go chasing after them again. Insanity of sin. At the great white throne judgment, every rebel, every God in Christ hater, every devil worshiper, every humanist, every evolutionist and atheist is going to kneel before the Almighty and will confess that he is God. Oh, well, yes, you will. Yeah. All laughing God's face. No, you won't. No, you won't. They don't know who they're dealing with. Not at all. Well, we're going to end there. I mean, it, to me, it, 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 it's an amazing song. And it, it's one of the things I think about quite often, the incredible blessing that we have. That because we have a complete and finished revelation that's been given to us. When we read things like Psalm 46, what we see and know and understand compared to what the psalmist knew at the time that he was writing it is incredible. I mean, this, this, is, this is such an amazing book, what is in here for us. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the truths contained in your word. Father, and I know from my own experience, Father, that if we will continue to study and to read your word and to pray, that you will show us more and more and give us more and more wisdom and more and more.